This patient presents with mid-face hypoplasia after growth is complete uh, with bilateral complete cleft lip and palate deformity. His operation is planned to give him proper skeletal support and good aesthetic balance and harmony of his face. Model surgery demonstrates the four-piece maxillary osteotomy that is going to be performed. Using a Coloretta needle, a buccal sulcus incision is made, uh, leaving a cuff of mucosa to allow easy closure. A subperiosteal dissection is performed, identifying the infraorbital nerve and protecting it. A bifid osteotome is used in the septum, just above the vomerin groove, below the cartilaginous septum, to assure separation of the soft tissues from the maxilla. This is completed with the finger in the posterior pharyngeal region to assure uh, safety of the definitive cut. A reciprocating uh, saw is used to perform the maxillary osteotomy through the anterior wall of the maxilla. A dotre osteotome is used to uh, confirm that the posterior wall of the maxilla is sharply uh, osteotomized. And this is done very carefully uh, to preserve and protect the descending palatine neurovascular bundle. The reciprocating saw is then used uh, through the buttress and anterior maxillary wall on the opposite side and making sure that this is completed in the piriform region so that there is a complete clean cut. This is important to assure easy mobilization of the segments. Again, a dotre osteotome is used to confirm and perform the osteotomy of the posterior wall of the maxilla. Again, performing this laterally and preserving the uh, descending palatine neurovascular bundle. To assure good down fracturing, uh, Rowe Kilner uh, disimpaction forceps are placed on both sides on, so that all segments are controlled, and these are then, uh, with stabilization of the head, down fractured. Once that's complete, soft tissue creep is, is uh, created to allow mobilization. No osteotome is used at the tergomaxillary junction. This is simply mobilized with a periosteal elevator, carefully placing this between the maxillary tuberosity and the pterygoid plate. This is done on the right side so that the soft tissues are stretched, but it's also important because there's no bleeding with a, with a periosteal. The uh, bone spreader uh, is now used to uh, help mobilize the segments and a wire is placed in each segment to gain control of these segments while the uh, individual osteotomies are performed. This gives the surgeon uh, complete control. The left index finger is placed in the palate while the uh, reciprocating saw is used uh, with the uh, right hand uh, forming an osteotomy through the entire maxillary segment on the patient's left side. Uh, the gingiva is preserved uh, intact, and in this case, an anterior uh, mucosa gingival bridge was necessary in order to assure good uh, vascularity. A small interdental uh, osteotome is used to perform the remaining interdental uh, continuation of the osteotomy. This is done very carefully identifying the roots of the teeth and going between those. Now a bone spreader is used to mobilize the soft tissues of the segments. So the left segment uh, has been uh, completely uh, freed and now the uh, right segment is being uh, osteotomized with the reciprocating saw with protection of the gingiva with a right angle retractor. The osteotomy is completed going parasagittally along the midline of the palate and then completing this with the interdental osteotomy using the small delicate uh, osteotome. 
This has now been cut into four segments, and these are mobilized again with the, with the bone uh, spreader. The prefabricated dental splint is inserted and uh, wired into place with orthodontic wires. A uh, intermediate splint is likewise put into position and the positioning of the maxilla done with an aesthetic sense for the show of the anterior central teeth. This is based on the surgical uh, aesthetic experience. The uh, segments are first fixed with wires to stabilize them and then once this is secured a uh, titanium plates and screws are used for the definitive fixation. We prefer to use uh, semi-rigid fixation using these titanium plates and screws of Synthes which were custom made are 0 0.6 millimeters uh, thick and the screws are 1.3 millimeters in diameter. Two plates are placed on each side incorporating the uh, multiple segments so that there is good stabilization. The multiple segmental surgery allows for leveling of the occlusion and that's a major problem in secondary cleft patients. The intermediate splint is removed uh, allowing a remaining of the final splint. A bite block is now inserted on the patient's left side and a sagittal split ramus osteotomy is performed. This osteotomy is performed with the uh, reciprocating saw with the lateral cortical plate being separated from the medullary segment with the nerve and vessel in the, in the medial segment. This is a good osteotomy which allows uh, protection uh, of the uh, teeth and mobilization of the segment. This was uh, done with, again, with the bone spreader. The osteotomy is now being performed on the opposite side with the reciprocating saw. Identification of the nerve is made on x-ray on panel lips prior to making the cut. The, again, the bone spreader is inserted. The lateral cortical plate is separated from the medial medullary uh, plate with the uh, contained vessels and nerves. A single wire is placed to secure the proximal and distal segments on both sides, which allows fixation of these segments in the occlusal with the occlusal splint in position. A right-angled uh, screwdriver is used to fix the screws. Previously, uh, this has been drilled. This is being done on the opposite side. We use two screws on each side. Here is the completed surgery with the final occlusal splint wired into position. We check the mandible for mobilization. There's good mobility and it is simply then temporarily closed with interdental elastics and the patient is returned to the intensive care unit. 